couple of nights ago, a few friends and I went out to cruise around. Anything to get away from the parents. In this town, there isn't much else to do. While we were out, Sandra suggested we go to the old graveyard on the edge of town. It's really spooky there at night. If the graves weren't enough to scare you, then the playground in the middle of the place was sure to give you shivers. I never did understand why they would put a playground in the middle of a cemetery. We arrived there around 11 p.m. Sandra, Chris, Tyler, and I all piled from the car and hopped the fence to get in. To get where we had to go, there was a long dirt path through a bunch of trees and a tunnel. Sandra pulled out her cell phone and used the flashlight on it. Once through the tunnel, the moon lit everything up pretty good. We swung on the swings and laughed as Tyler pushed us all on the merry-go-round. We were being average bored teenagers. After a while, we decided to go and check out the tombstones. Some of them were from way back in the day, like from the 1800s. We looked at a few of them before we realized something. All the graves around us were for children. By that time it was getting late. It was close to 12 a.m. Chris had a midnight curfew, so we decided to leave. As we made our way out, a faint sound could be heard. It almost sounded like children laughing. Just before we made it to the tunnel, Tyler noticed some of the swings were moving on their own. There was no wind blowing at the time, so that wouldn't explain it. Then the seesaw went up and down. Finally, the merry-go-round began to spin on its own. That was enough for us. Sandra turned her flashlight back on and we ran out of there. The light began to flicker on and off, then turned off completely. None of us dared to stop and figure out why. Sounds of laughter increased. All through the tunnel I could feel hands tap me, as if someone was playing tag. At one point on the dirt path, I could have sworn I saw a couple of other people running with us. I know they weren't part of our group. They were too short to be one of my three friends. When we made it out of the trees, we all went another ten feet before any of us stopped to look back. Nothing unusual was behind us, although I could swear I heard faint cries of children. I'm still a little concerned by what happened. I don't think they meant any harm, but you never can tell. If you find a cemetery with a playground in it, definitely don't go there at night. It seems as if even dead children still like to have fun. The library where this took place was made in the early 1900s. Rumor is that one of the librarians had an affair with a rich banker in town. When it was discovered, she hung herself at work surrounded by the books she loved. There's been all sorts of sightings and strange happenings there. Books stacked on their own, a woman in a dress floating down the aisles, and even objects moving by themselves. The one I'm about to tell you is a little less dramatic, but probably more realistic. It happened last year. I was at the library late one night studying for my exams. Not many other people were in the building at the time, as it was about to close. I'm there often, so I know all the librarians that work. Well, at least the ones that work at night. I needed a book on investment banking, as that was the course I was in. According to the computer, it should have been there, but when I went to find it, I came up short. This frustrated me, as the assignment was due the next day. None of the librarians could be found. They were probably in the back locking up or something. For a while I continued my search. Maybe it had been misplaced and put into a spot nearby, I thought to myself. Right when I was about to give up, a lady appeared almost out of nowhere. She wore fairly plain clothes that seemed a little dated, but not out of place. It was a white blouse with a collar and long sleeves, coupled with a blue skirt that went down to her ankles. Her blonde hair was curled and worn up. She said she was a librarian, then asked if she could help me find something. I told her what I was looking for, and she responded that she knew where it was. She then led the way and we talked for a bit. I mentioned that I had never seen her before. Her response was that she usually worked the day shift. Fair enough, I thought to myself, as I'm usually in class during the day, and not in the library. We got to where she was leading me, then she said something odd. Here it is. I put most of the banking books in the D-aisle, for deception. When she bent down to get it, I noticed a red mark along her neck that was normally hidden by her blouse. I was kind of puzzled by her at this point. When she handed me the book, I just said thanks and turned to leave. When I got to the front to check it out, Lisa, one of the librarians I know, asked me if I found everything alright. I told her I had, but went on to explain what had happened. That's when she told me the whole history behind the rumors. She confirmed that who I saw was the lady that everyone talks about. That was the first time the ghost had ever spoken to anyone. 
I can't help but think that it had something to do with the subject that I was studying. I'm really lucky she didn't resent me for it. She might have done something nasty. This didn't happen that long ago. I forget the exact date, but it must have been around last week. School had been rough with lots of tests and quizzes. When things get heavy, I like to go and visit my grandpa's grave. He always had great advice, and when I'm there, I can remember it better. I took lilies to his site. Those were his favorite flowers when he was alive. As I approached, I noticed there was a new headstone not too far from him. Monthly visits are kind of my thing, so that must have been put there recently. When I got to his tombstone, I put the flowers in front. It's level there, and they won't tip over. The day was bright with not any wind. Not even a minute after I put the flowers down, they tipped over. I corrected them, and shortly after, they tipped again. This happened a few more times before I finally moved them to the other side of the stone. I sat there and talked to myself, reminisced about all the things that Grandpa used to say and do to make me feel better. Even though there was no one else around, I couldn't shake the feeling that someone was watching me. You know that feeling? It's kind of like a tingling sensation all over, but not a good tingly. Whatever it was, it definitely didn't give me the warm and fuzzies. This went on the whole time I was there. Occasionally I'd look around for someone, but I never saw anyone. After about half an hour, I was too stressed to stick around anymore. As I got up to leave, the wind picked up. It started off as a gentle breeze, but soon turned into a violent gust. Quickly the gust abated. I didn't pay it much mind and kept on. Then another gust hit me. This time I could have sworn I heard someone say, Wait. Figuring it was only my imagination, I continued once more. The same thing happened again. I stopped to look around. Still, no one was there. Before I could take another step, the wind hit me again. Wait. Someone said. Who's there? I asked. No one responded, so I began to move to my car again. Another gust hit. This time, someone said, Stay. Grandpa, is that you? I asked. No response. Stay! Was repeated again. By now I was seriously getting pissed off. If someone thought this joke was funny, they were very mistaken. Is that supposed to be funny? I yelled out. If this is Grandpa, then say yes. If not, then say no, I demanded. Nothing happened, so I started off to the car. This time there was no gust. Only a long, drawn-out whisper. No. Then, how long do you want me to stay, I asked. Without delay, it answered, Forever. That was enough of that. I bolted straight from my car and didn't look back. I'm not planning on visiting Grandpa's grave again for a while. It still freaks me out every time I think of what happened.